Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched She-Hulk episode 3 at 0.25 big speed and found 12 new details that you may or may not have seen before. Now I'm gonna keep this video very very short as this show is getting some heavy negative reviews. I'm not gonna try to change your opinion on the show, if you hate it, you must have a reason for it. And if you like it, you must also have a reason for that. I'm just gonna point out the details that I found in an old fashioned way. When Marvel comes up with a show that is really worth our time, I will do a complete breakdown. Anyway, let's begin. Number 1. When Nikki looks up Wong on social media, she finds his LinkedIn profile. And you can see that before becoming the Sorcerer Supreme, he worked at Target for 9 years. And notice he has a total of 110 connections and one of them is Bruce Banner. Now the number 110 is not a random number. It's a reference to his first ever comic book appearance in Strange Tales number 110. Now if you think Wong is really busy, I mean my guy is literally in everything in phase 4 but he does keep his LinkedIn profile up to date. As we can see he made some changes just just two months ago, and he has a total of 802 followers. Number 2. When a video plays on YouTube showing the news reporting on She-Hulk, we can spot other related videos, which include She-Hulk Not Real Theory, Superhero Hoax, and the truth about so-called She-Hulk with the negative image of She-Hulk in the thumbnail. Number 3. Then we see a whole montage of people hating She-Hulk on social media. Now it seems like Marvel took real life inspiration from some Instagram comments made back in 2019 when they first announced She-Hulk. So, so wait a second, the writers know exactly who the audience is and still go on to write scenes like this? This was a golden opportunity to show us how women in the real world suffer. Don't just tell us, show us. The audience you're trying to trigger are not your enemies. Even if they are, at least don't treat them as such. If you're a writer, try to write a character like Wanda Maximoff or Layla from Moon Knight and then see everyone's reaction. Number 4. This episode introduces us to Mallory Book, who is a character from the She-Hulk comics. In the comics, Mallory also works with Jen at GLK and H, and the two become enemies because before Jen joined this firm, Mallory was the top lawyer here. Number 5. Wong makes a reference to Spider-Man No Way Home. Not erasing everyone's memories, not again. That is not what I was thinking, that is highly unethical. Yeah, it's also a very messy, believe me. Now, I've seen a lot of people coming up with atrocious theories saying Wong might still remember Peter Parker. Parker, but I don't think that's the case. There's a simple explanation here. The fact that Spider-Man exists, fought to villains from the multiverse, almost destroyed the Statue of Liberty, everything pretty much is still in everyone's memory. Those were not white. Wong knows those things happened, and it happened because of the spell going wrong. He just doesn't remember why it went wrong or how. Because remember, this is what J. Jonah Jameson said at the end of No Way Home. It's been a few weeks since the fiasco on the Statue of Liberty and Spider-Man's cultists continue- So Wong still doesn't remember Peter Parker. Unless of course it gets changed in Spider-Man 4, but not before that I'm afraid. Number 6. When Pug is watching the video of the Megan Thee Stallion impersonator, we can see a related video about the Iron Man 3 sneakers. A similar ad was also seen in episode 2. And this whole streaming platform seems fake as well, as it says you screen instead of YouTube. Number 7. When Jen is going through her list of witnesses for Emil Blonsky's parole hearing, notice that she has Wong's name in quotation marks. Now this could be for two reasons. A. She she's not 100% certain that that's even his real name. Or B, Wong is the primary witness whose statement matters the most. Number 8. When Wong appears using a portal to take the stand for Emil Blonsky, notice the portal rings reflect on Jan's glasses in a way that kinda looks like Billy Jigsaw, no? And you know this was intentional from the VFX team because Marvel just uses ring lights which then the VFX team turns into this magical portal. So for it to reflect properly on Jan's glasses, it has to be done manually. Number 9. After after Runa impersonates the judge and leaves the room, notice the facial expression of Bukowski. Ugh. I love this moment, because you could feel at that moment, Bukowski had a flashback of all the intimate moments he had with Runa, disguised as Megan the Stallion. The comedy in this show is actually good. It may not be as great as some other Marvel films, but it's still there. Number 10. As Jen leaves the prison, one of the reporters asks if she actually got her Hulk powers from a mafia hit gone wrong. Is there any truth to the rumors you got your powers from a mafia hit gone wrong? This is actually a nod to how Jennifer got her powers in the comics. In the comics, Jen gains her Hulk powers after she's in need of a blood transfusion after a hit gone wrong and Bruce is the only available donor, and that's how Bruce's blood gets on Jen. Quite an interesting origin story as opposed to what we're getting now. 
Number 11. Towards the end of the episode, Jen gets attacked by the Wrecking Crew. Now notice when Jen gets grabbed from behind, she doesn't immediately hulk out, meaning she has learned to control her anger and fear to a level where she now deliberately needs to hulk out. Whereas our Hulk, when he gets shot or has an accident, he immediately turns into the Hulk. Number 12. The Wrecking Crew was actually hired to steal She-Hulk's blood, and that's what this guy tried to do, but the syringe couldn't penetrate She-Hulk's skin. Now here's a tiny CGI mistake I noticed. I understand the syringe not being able to penetrate She-Hulk, but why wasn't it able to tear the suit? There should at least be some marks on her sleeves here. Her suit is made of regular fabric after all. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of She-Hulk episode 3 at point two fabric speed. I hope you liked it. I'll see you lads in the next one. And oh, coming up next is my breakdown of Spider-Man No Way Home's brand new scenes. And I guarantee you lads, you're gonna love that video. So please subscribe and turn notifications on if you haven't already. Okay, bye now.